Good afternoon, everyone. And on behalf of our pastor, Reverend Robert Blake, and our associate ministers, Reverend Dr. Laura Foster, and Reverend Del Del Deborah Elliott, and all the members of the Greater, we welcome you to our virtual worship service right here at Greater Quinn AME Church, located at 13501 Rose Parks Boulevard in Detroit, Michigan. And we will now have our congregational hymn. Please join us. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. The verse, the devotion verse, Psalms 119 and 4, 14. I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies as much as in all riches. Learning about the testimonies of the Lord and reading the Bible is one of the most fascinating aspects of being a Christian. People have spent their entire lives dis disinsecting the meanings of ancient texts and scriptures, gleaning different results based on a few words of different translations. There is a multitude of riches to any believer in the Lord. Knowledge wisdom, and love. Prayer, Lord God Almighty, 
It is an honor to get to know you. I pray that I can spend my life learning about your ways and growing faith together. Forgive me, merciful Father, for my time of fear and sloth have prevented me from going, growing closer to you previously. I am asking that you pardon these sins and I pledge a newfound vigor to learning about and implementing your commandments. I pray this in the blessed name of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, hallelujah, and amen. Thank you, Reverend Foster, for that wonderful prayer. Today's scripture reading is found in 1 Corinthians 15, and I'll be reading verses 50 through 57. That's 1 Corinthians 15, verses 50 through 57. I'll be reading out the King James Version. Amen. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye of the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall be, when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying of, that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. May the Lord add his blessings through the reading, the hearing, and application of his holy word. And now we will hear from our own church ministry, uh, music ministry.
at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised. Incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Watch, for this corruptible must put on incorruption. Wow. And this mortal must put on immortality. Hallelujah. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought the past the same that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, hate your grave, where is your victory? Or oh, death, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. Watch this, good news. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord. Jesus Christ, the word of God for the people of God. You may be seated in his prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's pray. God, in the name of the Lord Jesus, to the power of your and Father, by your word, we just want to say thank you for all that you are and all that you've done for us today. It is the day you've made, and we are rejoicing, and we are glad in it. Now, Holy Spirit, this is your moment. This is your time. Set us aside and do what you need to do to us, through us, and for us. Come on, give us revelation knowledge in the name of the Lord Jesus. Allow us to know the things of God, yes, even the deep things of God. Allow us to share in what you know. Allow us to see in what you know. In the name of the Lord Jesus, give us minds to conceive, and hearts to believe, and ears to receive the spoken word of God. Grant us accuracy in preaching, teaching, and speaking, and grant us accuracy in hearing. In the precious name of Jesus. Now, Father, now unto us. Not unto us, but unto your name. Give glory for your mercy and your truth's sake. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. God, we thank you for it. Every heart agreed and said, yes. And thank you. And praise the Lord. We have been talking for the last six weeks or so about living in the power. It's been that long yet. Living in the power of the resurrection. Uh, I was sitting up yesterday asking and earlier this week even asking God uh, what's the point? How can that help? How can that transform lives in today's setting? Um, when I walked out of church last week and sometime around last Sunday or Monday he whispered to me victory Victory. Look at your name and say victory. victory. And so I assume that's what I was supposed to be preaching on today. And I will try to do that. Victory. Uh, as I said, we've been dealing with this subject for the last six weeks now. Um, trying to get us to understand where we are supposed to be living in the realm of God. Amen. With an understanding that he gives us concerning the most powerful event in history. It's, it's not the world wars. No. no. It's, it, it's, it's not even, amen, the discovery of light or transit or anything like that. It is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It is interesting that uh, a minister of music and Sid, amen, would choose a song that declares the song. Amen. And so we really can go home now because we heard the sermon just a few minutes ago because he lives. I can face the Bible. It, it, it's the whole story. It's, it's the whole song. Amen. It, it, it's the whole testimony. It's the whole witness that because he lives, I can face tomorrow. There are men and women who are out here today, even young men and women, children, teenagers, that we found out, amen, that hallelujah, in this moment of our lives, Teenagers have come under attack, children have come under attack, people have come under attack, amen, where they want to just take their lives because they realize, they believe that there's nothing past what they're going through right now. That this is all there is. Your trouble, your trial, your tribulation right now is all there is. 
And God is shaking his head saying, no, 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 no. There's a better way. No, 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 no. And it is for us. It is for the body of believers. It is for the church to tell men and women, there is another way. There is a better way. And this is not all there is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. I forgot who it was who one of the jazz singers. And the song was, is this all there is? Then let's keep dancing. Amen. But this is not all there is. All that you go through is not all there is because there's somebody who is able to help you through trouble. There's somebody who can help you conquer all that you're going through. Hallelujah. Listen to the song that was just sung. All fear is gone. So many people right now are living in fear. I didn't plan to preach the song, but so many people are living in fear today and they're living in fear thinking this is all there is. Yeah, we've been given a word that, watch this, you have victory. Yeah. Yeah. People of God should be shouting today. But they're not shouting because even the people of God believe that this is it. We don't want change. We don't like change. We think change is bad. Hallelujah. A change is actually good because that's what this text really is all about. It's about change. Watch, 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 watch. We always need to change in order to, to enter a higher grade of life. We always need to change to enter a higher grade grade of life. You, you, you can be the fastest person running up and down the streets of Detroit and everybody thinks you're so fast. And, oh, you just you just the fastest thing around and yet once you get into the Olympics and you find out that there are other folk in the world who are just as fast or faster than you, you got to take it to another level, baby. Somebody is always better than us in what we do. And, and, and believers were satisfied to be in a certain place. But God wants to move us higher. God wants to take us higher. God wants us thinking higher. He wants us to understand that when we come to this thing called the resurrection, we make it our life. That, that's why last Sunday we talked about Easter every day. Yeah, because as you're walking this pathway of life, as you're going through the seas of life and time, guess what? You gotta go knowing that you're not by yourself. You got no going that's going, you gotta go knowing that you have the victory in Christ Jesus because he was raised from the dead and he brought you with him. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Look at the text. Now this I say, brothers and sisters, that Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit it corruption. You have got to be changed. I, I, I'm telling you a, a secret. I'm, I'm telling you a mystery that everybody doesn't understand. Everybody's not going to sleep. Come on now, but we shall all be changed. The way you are, you're going to be changed. You have to be changed. That's what salvation is all about. Salvation is about being changed. Hallelujah, it's the start of our transformation. Amen. Until we accept Christ, there's no transformation. Once we get saved, that's the start of our transformation. That's the start of our change. Now, that's why we need to be changed. Remember, you can't go higher. You can't excel until you're changed. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's got to be a change. And Paul, in this summary of what he's been talking about in 1 Corinthians 15 suggests to us, amen, that a change has to be made because first that first verse, amen, in 50 was so important. We ran by it, but let me go back to it. Brothers and sisters, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Did you all catch that? Your flesh and your blood, the way you are, cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Folk want to get to heaven the way they are. It ain't working for you, baby. 
There's got to be a change. And he tells us that these bodies have to go through something. Remember we talked about the tents being torn down. Well, there's a reason they need to be torn down. Because he wants to do something new. Because you can't get to heaven the way you are. I can't get to heaven the way I am. There's got to be a change. And the reality is that when there is a change, all God's going to do is his, his eyes are going to twinkle. Come on, somebody. When you talk about the, the, the blessings of God and the miracle of God and, and the miraculous of God and how God is, I realize that sometimes, God, all you got to do is just twinkle your eye. When you see it, just twinkle your eye. Let me tell you something. Twinkle your eye and healing comes. Twinkle your eye and deliverance comes. Twinkle your eye and help comes. God, will you just twinkle your eye? Hallelujah. How often do we need to really move by faith? We want folks to lay their hands on us and pour oil all over us. If God would just twinkle his eye, there'd be a change in us. Wow. Paul explains to us that what we are living in has to, it has to come off. It has to change. And he says, when it does change, that we can do the poem that's found in Isaiah, the 25th chapter. That death is swallowed up in victory. You know, we're afraid of death. We're afraid of death, one, because of the unknown. We're afraid of death because we see ourselves compared to God. And we see ourselves as nothing but sinners. We see ourselves with unconfessed sin. We we see ourselves being scared of a just God. And all we see is our unrighteousness. And can I help you this afternoon? The devil's job is to make you feel and see your own unrighteousness. And yet Jesus said in his word, I am come to give you life. Well, that life means, watch this. First of all, your unrighteousness is changed to righteousness because of what he did on Calvary's tree. And when you are changed by the blood, when you are changed by his word, when you are changed because of salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ, you no longer have to be put under condemnation by the enemy that wants to tell you that you are the least of these, that you are less than, because he's made you more than a conqueror. He's made you victorious. You have victory in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah, maybe we need to stop popping and hopping with the, with the, with the up-to-date songs and go back to the old hymn. There is victory in Jesus, my Savior and Master. Hallelujah, he gives you victory today. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We're afraid to die because if we look at our, because we look at our own unrighteousness. And yet the Lord has made us righteous. Watch. Remember in 2 Corinthians, he who knew no sin was made to be sin for you, that you might be made what? The righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That's who you are. Yes. Yes. Judge yourself and say, that's who I am. I wish you would do it today. Hallelujah. But when, when I think about what Paul is teaching him, what he's trying to show us, I was sitting up yesterday and, 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 and I got this, amen, just Fell into my spirit a couple of things. You know, we always need to be changed. I think about the apostles and the disciples that were changed. A couple of things that changed them. First of all, hallelujah, them, them just following Jesus really didn't change them that much. They, they still had the stuff, you know. Peter had the stuff. Amen. That, that, that's why he, what did he do to Jesus? He denied Jesus. Hallelujah. He still had his stuff. Amen. Thomas was still doubting. Hallelujah. The apostles were still afraid. They were hiding out. But something happened in their change. And the change was when Jesus got up from the grave. He met with them. Y'all remember he rolled up in the room and said, peace be up here. Hallelujah. They thought it was a ghost. He said, give me something to eat. Give me some catfish. Give me a cup of greens. Give me a little cornbread. Hallelujah. A ghost can't eat catfish. A ghost can't eat greens. A ghost can't he Hallelujah. But Jesus said, I'll leave it in front of you. Hallelujah. And it wasn't just them, but the Bible says that, hallelujah, he met with 500 uh, to show that he was alive. Uh, and the moment they got it, hallelujah, they got this uncanny boldness uh, to begin to declare and to teach folk uh, that Jesus, hallelujah, was raised from the grave. When you have an understanding of his resurrection in your life and what Jesus really did for you, you get an uncanny boldness. In other words, it's almost supernatural.
supernatural that you can go anywhere and talk to anybody about what Jesus has done instead of being scared. Hallelujah. Not only will he give you uncanny boldness, but you know what you know. What happens not when you know what you know? Hallelujah. Let me tell you what happens when you know what you know. You don't care. You can live the don't care. They might talk about me, but I don't care. I might be a holy roller, but I don't care. I might be telling everybody about Jesus, but I don't care. Hallelujah. When you know what you know, the disciples and the apostles, they knew what they knew. And when you look at the book of Acts and they begin to tell them, hallelujah, about Jesus, they weren't afraid. They go in prison. They get them out of prison. They go back to the prison. They didn't care. Do you care today? We're caring about, we care about everything else. And we tell them, take care. But we tell them to take the wrong kind of care. Can I help you this afternoon? You ought to take you some care, but not to care everybody else wants you to take. They want you to take their care. You need to take the care of knowing what you know. I know Jesus. I know him for myself. Yes, I know Jesus. Yes, I know Jesus. Yes, yeah, you know it. You know what you know. So you just don't care. Maybe it's because some of us, hallelujah, don't want to be suffering. And folks will tell you, you don't have to suffer. Yes, you do. If you love Jesus, you got to suffer because everybody don't care about Jesus. Everybody don't want to hear about Jesus. Also, yeah, everybody thinks they trust and believe in God, but everybody don't care about hearing the name called Jesus. And so suffering will happen. You might be ostracized. You might be by yourself. Hallelujah. You might be suffering. But can I help you this afternoon? Hallelujah. Suffering is good. Look at your neighbor and say, suffering is good. They had to suffer for Jesus. Some were beat down for Jesus. Hallelujah. Some went to prison for Jesus. Hallelujah. Some were murdered for Jesus. Help me this afternoon. I'm thinking about those persons. Hallelujah. That are in captivity right now in Haiti. And I just wish that the boldness and the Holy Ghost I'm going to get to it in a moment. Men would rise up in them. Hallelujah. That they would have a don't care attitude. If you want to kill me, kill me. But I'm declaring Jesus. You want to kill me? I'm going to preach this gospel. I'm going to tell you I don't care. But I live for Christ. I die for Christ. He'll save you. Hallelujah. I wish to God they would turn the tide. Hallelujah. Now, I'm not in captivity, baby boy. You hold that gun, you in captivity. I know somebody that set me free already. And I'm carrying boldness. Hallelujah. Don't care. Hallelujah. When you know what you know, suffering is good. Why is suffering good? Because you are validated. Jesus has validated you. We go so many places looking for other people to validate us. You don't need anybody validating you. You are validated. Hallelujah. Watch this. This validates you. That will validate you. Come on, can I help somebody? Channel 316, something. That, that's what validates you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that ever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting. That validates you today. Hallelujah. Stop going here and there looking for validation. They're not going to do a good enough job. Hallelujah. They're not going to puff you up enough. Hallelujah for your big head. Hallelujah. God will validate you and it has become a power. Hallelujah. He called your name. Are you listening? Hallelujah. He validates us. He validates us because he needs us to understand that death is destroyed. Yeah. And, and so when we talk about death being destroyed, when we talk about till death do us part. Hallelujah. We, we fail for that. Till death do us part. When he gave it to me, he told me to put a question mark behind that. Till death do us part. Hallelujah. Thank God for the text. It suggests to us that we never part from the creator who made us. 
We are not separated. Can I help somebody? When Jesus got on the cross. Hallelujah. And he was hung. And he was bleeding and he was dying. He said about seven things. Hallelujah. But one thing he said so you wouldn't have to say it. He went through it. He made it possible that you never be separated from God. You never die again. Hallelujah. Till death was part, there is no parting with God. Hallelujah. And Paul gives us this shout of victory. Death is swallowed up in victory. Death, where's your sting? Grave, where's your victory? Hallelujah. Watch this. The, the sting of death is sin. And we talked about it earlier. You see, you've been made righteous. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood. Ha! What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other found I know. Nothing but the blood. Hallelujah. He took the sting of death with your sin. Do you remember what Adam did? When they ate the fruit, they sinned. And that sin stained us. It stained us. It stained Abraham. It stained Isaac. It stained Jacob. It stained Moses. It stained David. It stained Hallelujah. Every prophet that ever declared a word, it stained. But Jesus came to wash the stain away. When he washed the stain away, he washed the stain out of us. Hallelujah. When it stings you, it dies because the sting is made in you. Hallelujah. When Jesus came to take the sting out of you, to give us deliverance, the sting don't save no more. Because life has been given to us. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, Jesus. Incorruption. 
and the word of God put on him for eternity. You got a change that you might get to a higher plane. You got a change that God can meet you where you need to be met, not where you want to be him. There has to be a change, you all. Hallelujah. If there's a change, you give you uncanny boldness. When there's a change, you don't care because you know what you know. When you change, you have an understanding that suffering is good. When you change, you understand that Jesus validates us. Hallelujah. When you change, death can't part you from his ways. But can I finish this and I'm done? One thing that the disciples had that some of us need, one thing that didn't happen for us that needs to happen to us is that we need that fire. Yes. Hallelujah. I, I began to tell you all about how when Jesus showed up, hallelujah, he showed up and told them who he was. Amen. But he told them you need to wait for fire. Mm. Hallelujah. Yeah, they knew what they knew. Yeah, yeah they did. Yeah. They had some boldness, but it wasn't complete until the fire came. And when the fire came, when Jesus showed up with fire through the baptism of the Holy Ghost, then the game really changed. No longer were they running away from the enemy, but they were running toward him because they had fire. You see, what he gave them might have been a David spirit because David didn't run away from Goliath, but he ran toward Goliath and said, here I am, you uncircumcised Philistine. I got the boldness. I got the heavens behind me. I got the kingdom of God behind me. What am I saying to you this afternoon? That when you were going out in that street, you got the kingdom of God behind you on your job. You got the kingdom of God behind you. When there's trouble, you got the kingdom of God behind you. If you're broken, you got the kingdom of God behind you. If you're sick, you got the kingdom of God behind you. If you're confused, you got the kingdom of God behind you. And you got the fire.
He's always blessed when there were famines. He specializes in the middle of a storm. Oh, y'all missed that show, okay. We're talking this side of it. He specializes in the middle of a storm. You understand what we're talking about? You understand what Paul figured out? When he met Jesus, he met resurrection power. God backed up everything he said and did for Paul. There was suffering, but God never left him. He died, but God never left him. Hallelujah. He continued to preach and to teach and to witness until his assignment was done. What's your assignment for God? What's your assignment? What's, what's, what's your assignment for God? Whatever it is, it'll get done through your resurrected understanding. Your resurrected knowledge, your resurrected wisdom, your resurrected power that comes to Christ Jesus. It is life. You, you, you watch, watch. This is how this how you watch. When Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly, it's the same thing as get up. And we read that we just got so happy. Oh, we're happy, happy, happy. What was he really talking about? What was he really talking about? He was talking about now. He was talking about his resurrected power life. That's the life he was talking about. You are witnesses that on the third day he got up. We're all witnesses. So you live in that. And he wants to make you sick. God doesn't have to make you sick. He lives it to life. He lives it to the devil. He don't have to make you sick. So yeah, while I'm sick, he's trying to show me something. No, he, he didn't make you sick to show you something. Somebody else or something else made you sick. God sent healing to show you something. God sent healing so you could go up to the hospital and tell folks so you have resurrected power in your body. You know? Yes, yes. But we're not called. Just let things be. Live in the resurrected power of Jesus Christ. There is victory there every single day. Study it. Go back over and listen to the sermons. Don't preach something for six weeks. Because we got to get it. You've got to get it. Because that's where your victory lies. So when we roll up here in 2022 on Resurrection Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, it'll mean something to you for real, for real, for real. And guess what you might do? You might have all your family members sitting up here because you understand the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. They are not greater than him. Amen. Did you catch me? We can't invite for a pandemic. Let me tell you something about this place. Again, for your hearing. This place has been sanitized. Amen. And it has been sanctified. Yes. 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 And actually, it just got sanitized this week. So where you're sitting is sanitation. <laughs> Sanitizing agents. So that can search. You sit on sanitization. But it's been sanctified ever since February 2020. Period. Tell your friends, tell your neighbor about the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. It's saving power. It's healing power. It's delivering power. You don't know him today. We invite you to know him. Jesus. 
Lord, Savior, Master, High God, Rock, Redeemer, if you don't know him, come to know him today. Very simply, just tell Jesus I'm here. Just tell Jesus, yes, Lord. All they're really looking for is a yes, Lord. Yes. You know, when we're in prayer this week, amen, each night we finish with a yes. Yes, we agree, but let's pray. We, we agree. Yes! Yes, we agree. And you can't do anything without the yes. Do you realize that until you give God permission, you're on your own? Oh, no, he's got it. No, God's not going to intrude on your business. you got to give him a Yes. You have to give it permission to interrupt your life. If you don't know him today in this sanctuary, if you don't understand resurrection power still, we're here to pray for you. If you don't know him, you need to be saved, period. You can never get what you need to get from God until you're saved. You, you might have a pocket full of money, a house so large and my house can fit in it. But the devil can bless too. The word of God says he's transformed himself into an angel of light just to keep you bound. You think you got it going on and you have never said yes to Jesus Christ. That's foolish. And I say that to you in love. You need to say yes to him today. Those of you who are watching on Facebook Live, you're coming into your homes this afternoon. If you've never said yes, this is your moment to say yes to the Lord Jesus Christ. Just a simple God, yes. Come on, stand to your feet in the sanctuary. People who are watching us on Facebook Live, this is the invitation. If you don't know him, come on and know him today. If you've never said yes, come on and say yes to me. For those of you who are watching, we're going to pray a prayer for you. Amen. At your homes. Because you might be saying yes right now. We believe you are. Somebody's been praying for you this week to say yes. Somebody's been praying for you this week for you to give it up to him on today. Somebody's been praying for you. Won't you come? Won't you say yes? Hallelujah. Praise God. Rejoice in that. Hallelujah. 
Turn back over to the pastor. Amen. Praise God forever. Yeah, all of you that are here this afternoon, and we thank God for you being here live with the greater. And we appreciate your song. We pray that something that was said and then that blessed you today. In Jesus' name, those of you who are watching us on Facebook Live again, we appreciate you coming, allowing us to come into your homes this afternoon. We pray that whatever was said, amen. It's blessing you even right now and we'll keep you through this week. In Jesus' name, that is our prayer. Again, for all of you that were with us on our seven days of prayer, we appreciate you so very, very much. We thank God for you. Amen. And we just believe great things for the greater. Watch for the greater good. Amen. For the greater good. For all of our prayer leaders, God bless you. You bless people this week, and we so appreciate you. You bless the house called greater. We're going to close it out in prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. For those of you who are going through, amen. There's resurrection power working on your behalf. And all we ask you to do is just believe. If you can believe, all things are possible. You might be going through, you might be suffering, but just understand and know that you've got the kingdom of God pushing you forward, behind you, standing before you, standing behind you, standing with you, standing around you to bring glory to your life in this moment of your need. Come on, let's pray today. We've been calling your name all week long, but we're going to pray again on today. In Jesus' name, every head bowed, every eye closed. God, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we thank you, Father, for this moment. We thank you for the power of your word. We thank you, dear God, that your word is alive and powerful and sharper than any Georgian sword. Your word is pure and it's a shield of the Lord that put their trust in you. Your word is life to those that find it and help to all that flesh. Your word is settled forever. And so, God, because of the power of your word, we pray and declare over every person watching us, every person listening to us today, that God may have what they need in the name of Jesus, resurrection power. We thank you this afternoon, dear God, that you're still a healer of those who are sick. You're still the provider of those who are in need. You're still the helper to those who feel helpless. You're still grand over to those who are hopeless. In the name of Jesus, we proclaim victory on this afternoon. Every person watching, every person hearing, we declare victory, God, regardless of situation, regardless of circumstance. We declare victory today. In the name of Jesus, God, we thank you today. We know there are those who are mourning, those who are bereaved. God, we believe to you today to dry tears, stay dying. We believe you today to turn mourning into dancing. We believe you today to mend your God what's broken and heal what's wounded in the precious name of Jesus. We believe you to do it, God, because you said you'd never leave us. You'd never forsake us. So, God, we just want to tell you thank you right now. God, we thank you for being in that hope right now. We declare a word of peace. In the name of Jesus, we come against all satanic opposition. In the name of Jesus, we come against every plot, every plan, every scheme coming against your people right now. We declare the blood and the resurrection power of Jesus. We declare his name because every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. God, we believe in victory today. Thanks be to God who causes us to have victory. In the precious name of Jesus. Come on, y'all. Somebody shout victory today. If you have hope, shout victory. Touch yourself, touch your body. Sound like victory today. In Jesus' name. Victory. Certainly, our prayer for all of you is that the Lord would wash you with his word. He would see you, seal you by his spirit. He would baptize you with fire and fill you with the Holy Spirit. He would anoint you with his power. He would fill you with his love. That his angels of safety and protection would be around about all of us, and all of us would be covered with the blood. This is Pastor Robert Blake, live from the greater, hallelujah, and if the Lord say so, and we like to say at the creek don't rise, same time, watch, same Holy Ghost station, hallelujah, we'll be here on next week. We love you, God bless you, live, laugh, and love, hallelujah, your friends and your neighbor and yourself, in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.